ready when you are. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you everyone for coming and calling the meeting to order. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev and Brian Campadelli. And this um, meeting is being recorded. Is there any public comment? No public comment. We will move on to item number three, request for change of hours of temporary outdoor seating extension pursuant to phase two of reopening the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Notch eight, incorporated DBA, Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, the deck at 125A Pleasant Street. Do we have anyone here, Annie? So uh, Jeremiah doesn't seem to be here. Uh, maybe he'll pop in. Okay. Um, otherwise, he just wants to change his hours, um, not closing hours, but opening hours um, to 11.30 a.m. seven days a week. Right now okay. it's 4 p.m. So I don't know. I guess we could wait and see if he shows Okay, we'll wait for him. Uh, move on to item number four. Review and approval of application for extension of premises for an all alcohol liquor license onto private property for Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated DBA Sylvester's Restaurant at 111 Pleasant Street. And do we have someone here from Sylvester's? Yes, hi, I'm the manager of Sylvester's. My name is Jillian Duclos. Hi Jillian, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. Do you want to just walk us through your application that you submitted? Sure, so we have uh, pulled together an agreement um, to the left-hand side of our building with Hamden Court, mm -hmm. um, which I believe you have on file, yep. um, which says that we are allowed to use uh, part of their property. Um, from Monday through Sunday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to put out three tables with nine chairs to extend our outside seating um, here at Sylvester's. Uh, so we do have three tables out there with nine chairs and we rope it off every morning so that people know where to enter and exit. Um, we keep everything um, six feet apart. I think our tables our actually station, we had 60 feet of space with only three tables. So they're spaced out more than six feet apart to make room for people who are sitting, um, room for that to keep social distance, um, as well as six feet from any table to the roped off position so people can walk in and out safely um, on a social, social distancely. And uh, so we set it up every morning and then we, uh, break it up and put all of our equipment on our property every night. Okay. Brian, do you have any questions for Jillian? Um, no, none at all. Annie, is there anything else we need to, to look at? Um, I guess I just note that, um, so it's not the tables at six feet, it's the back of the chairs at six feet, because it's supposed to be six feet between patrons. Right. Um, but, it, but it sounds like you have plenty of space to work through with that. Yeah. yeah, it looks like they have 12 feet from table to table. Okay, beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think in our, um, I had given, you know, an outline in our application as well as to how far we're, we're spacing everybody out. Um, but yes, it's 12 feet apart between tables, which allows for um, the three feet on each side that the chairs account for. Yep, that's perfect. And then the only other thing is um, you're going to need to walk on the sidewalk right. with your beverages, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, Natasha and Brian, you'll just need to include transportation of beverages for sidewalk. Um, in the motion? In the motion. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. I don't have any other questions. Are we ready for a motion then? Are you good, Brian? I am. Okay, then I'll make a motion to approve the uh, application for extension of premises for an all alcohol liquor license onto private property for Sylvester's as outlined in item four, including transportation of beverages over the sidewalk. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jillian. Thank so, you. Thanks so just, luck. Jillian, once you get everything set up, um, you're just gonna wanna call the building department and speak with Beth and she'll set up an inspection by um, the 
building department because they need to go come out and make sure the tables are spaced properly, et cetera. Um, and then they usually can do that the same day. And then once that's done, then I'll get notification and I'll send you your amended liquor license. All right. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on to item number five, review and approval of application for extension of premises for an all alcohol liquor license onto public property, OBCT Incorporated DBA Sierra Grill at 41 Strong Avenue. Hey, O'Brien, can you state Hi. your name for the record? Uh, O'Brien Tomalin. Thanks for coming. You wanna tell us about your application? Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, to clear it up, looks like I'm going to end up ditching a table based on what I just heard from you guys about the table, the backs of chairs. I got about 40 feet wide, so if the, my tables are uh, about uh, two feet wide, I was kind of counting. Um, I think I need to only, I, need, I think I need to get rid of one table. I okay. had five tables in there, and if they're two feet each, that's 10 feet, and then um, I don't, I have a scale drawing. Unfortunately, I had to do this at my house. I wasn't getting reception at Sierra. Um, so I came here to do it with our, our better Wi-Fi. Um, but I think that, um, I mean, I can measure again. I thought I had it, but now I just questioned myself because I did it about five days ago when I drew everything up or whatever. Um, also, my my tent, uh, Amazon lost my tent. Oh, no. um, and they, I, they credited me and I have to reorder one now. So I, I kind of want to have that tent to define the space and also to kind of be able to put my tables under it at night and collapse it so that it's kind of more self-contained. Um, I plan on doing a uh, sandbags for all the legs on the tent and then I already have all that stuff. And then I'm gonna build a um, sort of like a snow fencing, uh, four by four post and cinder block fence on the street side. And um, right now I just have a small traffic cone and I didn't know if there were any bigger traffic barrels that we might be able to get on the two on each opposing end or um something like that because right now i only have a traffic cone that's about it's it's a mini one it's not even two feet tall and uh, i'd feel a little better if there was a way to maybe put something on each corner uh where oh. the jersey bears are oh brian uh the city didn't drop off some jersey barriers no they did okay i have jersey barriers but they put like little orange cones on the corner but they're literally, you know, little tiny ones that you would almost use on like a soccer field. They're not even like bigger ones. And I didn't know if there was any way to get anything a little bigger. Um, but I know everybody's pushed to the limits with gear like that, but um, yeah. they are kind of silly. Um, and I am going to have a string of lights under it and I am going to put some lights around it. Um, I also will have to cross the sidewalk to deliver beverages to, mm -hmm. um, to customers. And I was planning on leave, leaving uh, the whole side facing the building open unless you want it to be more restricted for access. How do you guys want me to do that? Have other people been doing that, Annie? I haven't, you know, I don't think people are. I think Dirty Truth yeah. has some, like, um, they have they like have a little fence and you can kind of go in, but, but, yeah. like, uh, Homestead and Local Burger are all open. They're open to the sidewalk. I think it's okay to be open. I don't think we've yep. restricted that end, have we, Annie? I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's okay as long as the area is contained and it's being properly watched yep. right? um, yeah. as to prevent public access. Yep. I think that's that's the only requirement. And the building department will measure the table distance. So when they will measure the distance. So once yeah. everything's okay. set up, they'll be able to tell you and that you can always ask them if you could possibly add another table that they're okay. been, yeah. been really helpful and they want to work with everyone to try and get the maximum table. Yeah, it's convenient that my tables are two foot by four feet wide and then they all kind of fit, you know, and I, I lined up five of them. I did that whole drawing to scale, so hopefully it should be okay. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with, uh, believe me, I, I am very much not, you know, want everybody to be spaced and be able to feel at ease when they're sitting there and not like they're too crowded. So I'm very much open to doing whatever. Uh, we have been only doing takeout now for two months and don't have any seating whatsoever happening. So I'll take whatever I can get. Makes sense. Do you have any questions, Brian? None. I'm you excited for you uh, 
O'Brien. That's good stuff. Yeah, my sales in July were down seventy thousand dollars. So <laughs> I know that feeling. I have yeah. no uh, down. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will. All right, then um, I'll make a motion then to approve the uh, application for extension of premises for an all alcohol liquor license onto public property for the establishment outlined in agenda item number five, including the transportation of alcohol over the sidewalk. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank and just you. Just to give you a quick little update, I did have an appointment scheduled with the billing department tomorrow, but since my tent didn't show, I they're they're waiting me to reschedule them so great okay so they right. have you did you uh was your tent big enough that you needed a tent permit uh it's 10 by 20 and i, I believe any tent they wanted to be able to see it okay yeah good yeah so yeah it's, so Brian, it's not going to cover the whole area but it'll cover you know basically it'll be a 10 foot section on either end that'll be remain open but it's big enough that I can slide all the tables together and shut it down that way. So, well, Brian, yeah. um, message me when you get a chance. Uh, I've got a couple of barricades you can use. Oh, awesome. Okay, that'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. You bet. All right. Thanks, O'Brien. Thank you all. Thanks, O'Brien. Um, Natasha, looks like we have Jeremiah yep. here. Hey, Jeremiah. We'll bump back up then to item number three, request for change of hours of temporary outdoor seating extension pursuant to phase two of reopening the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Notch 8, Incorporated DBA, Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, the deck at 125A Pleasant Street. Can you just state your name for the record, Jeremiah? Uh, Jeremiah Mika. Thank you. So you want to, ex you want to open earlier? Yeah, correct. Uh, just weekdays, uh, just trying to generate more sales mm -hmm. uh, every day, uh, 1130 until 10. Uh, Friday, Saturday, we already had it extended to 11 o'clock uh, in the anticipation that we were going to do that. And we did for Friday and Saturday, so. Great, I have no questions. Do you have anything, Brian? Nothing. No? Um, do we wanna make the motion? Um, sure. All right. Make a motion to Grant, I got to read it on my phone, so I don't have any. Hold on. Now. Oh, I can do it if you want. I just don't want to leave you out of motion making. I'll do oh, it. Oh, no. You, you go right ahead with the motion. All right. I'll do it. The uh, then I make a motion to approve the change of hours of temporary outdoor mm -hmm. seating extension pursuant to phase two of reopening for the establishments as outlined in item number three. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thank you. Sorry about being late. That's okay. Jeremiah, I'll send you a new license. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Wait for it in the mail and uh... I'll send an electronic version and then I'll mail well oh, then I'll mail one. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, you too. See ya. Okay, so good. <laughs> Thanks. Item number six, discussion and possible vote to determine the outcome of all alcohol club license currently held by Pine Grove Golf Club Incorporated in accordance with chapter 144 acts of 2008. Do we have someone here from Pine Grove? I'm, you have Tom Casper here, the purchaser. Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So I spoke with Gil and I, he didn't know whether or not he was gonna be able to attend. Um, but back in, I think it was October, November, we had a conversation about whether the commission was going to allow um, Pine Grove to transfer the license because it is a special act license. Um, and the, uh, you guys had determined that once there was movement on a sale, then you would revisit this discussion. And so now there is a buyer. Oh, great. Um, so that's why we're here. Okay. Um, what do we need to discuss then if there is a buyer and that person's not here? I guess because it's a special act license. Um, so the, the commission needs to determine whether or not the, um, it can be transferred. It wasn't special legislation though, right? It was it, the it is. In that lottery. No, it's it's a special act. Um, not it doesn't have anything to do with the lottery. Right, um, it was a different period in time when it came through, from what I recall. Yeah, it was the 2008 Act um, allowing 
um, all alcohol seasonal licenses to be converted to annual all alcohol licenses. And there was five of them that um, converted it to an annual. Have you done any research to see if there's any language on there stating that if it transfers, it reverts back to a seasonal? So doesn't revert back to a seasonal, but um, give me one second. Am I I'm just gonna sh uh, share my screen briefly. Um, so section two, subsection B, if a license converted under this act is canceled, revoked, or no longer in use, it shall be returned physically with all of the legal rights, privileges, and restrictions pertaining thereto the licensing authority which may then grant the license to a new applicant at the same location or at a location within the same economic development um so does that i, I can't re really see it that well does that um mean that it's reverting back to a seasonal or it gets no it it's very all sorry that's okay it just it carries all the uh the weight that it had when it was converted Yes, yeah, so it, it's still an annual all alcohol. Right, and there's is nothing. It current, Go is, ahead. It, is it currently in use? Because at the time when Gil came to the meeting, it wasn't in use at that time, but they were going to be reopening. And that was the whole question was, if it's not using, then should it be revoked until a buyer comes forward? Right, well, I mean, they- We agreed not to revoke it, that he was um, utilizing it until he sold the property, which, has happened from what I remember. So nobody's, so it's not, the license is not in use at this time. I mean, it's still attached to Pine Grove, but I, I, I honestly, I don't know if they're open or not. I, I don't know. No, they're selling the property. And I think the property has sold, um, but now he's got, he has to get that cleaned out and cleared out. So as far as I can tell. I mean, the city bought most of his other land. So, but for the, for the purposes of section 2B, if the license is not being used at the moment, if the property is being cleared out, what have you, it hasn't, the buyer hasn't formalized the purchase of the license. It seems to me the license should come back to the city and then the applicant for the person purchasing the property at that same location would get that license back. Is that correct, Annie, how that would work? Um, well, well, it doesn't have to be used at the same location. It just has to be used in the same, either, either in the same location or at a location within the same economic development target zone, which is central business, general business, highway business, et cetera. Right. Yeah, I mean, then I think the biggest question is if it's being used right now, and if they're if they aren't operating a, a restaurant, bar, or cafe in that location, then it's not currently in use. Didn't we grant him a period to find a buyer? Yeah, it was like a, well over the period we granted. <laughs> I think we granted. I think we had six months, and then asked for an update, and we didn't get one. Yeah, is but it was still in use at that time. That place is open. I mean, people he, were running he out. Did, he did tell us that he was <laughs> going to be keeping it open through the summer. Um, there was question of whether that was actually happening or not. Right. Um, but he, he did tell us that he was going to be using it through the summer. And that we would revisit this conversation once there was a buyer or potential buyer, prospective buyer. So now there's a buyer. So what is... Is there, uh, let's see, who, who do we have here? I know Stephanie McNair is here and I've been talking to her about it. And also, um, I'm sorry, what, what did you say your name was? Um, Tom Casper. Tom Casper. So uh, I guess, where are you in that process? So I, I am in the process of leasing um, the front of 261 King Street. And I want to open a, a small bar restaurant there i'm retiring and my husband and i are moving up to um, northampton 
and we want to open a small restaurant there. So that was what I wanted to use the license for. And Annie, that use would qualify for this license? Um, I'm just trying to think because I, I, that was, that's a good, I was just thinking um, if 261 King is, I don't think it's in central business. Um, Annie, it's in highway business. Hi, Annie. It's in highway business? Okay, well then yes, that would classify. That would work. Okay. Well, we can't really do anything uh, unless Gail is present, correct? Uh, um, <laughs> Doesn't he need to be part of this? If you, if you and Natasha feel as if he does, um, I don't, I can't say one way or another that's you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I thought he called you and was um, apprehensive about today and needed more time or something like that because he, he called me briefly and I told him to call you. So, no, I haven't talked to him. Yeah, he said he might not be able to technical, you know, with the technology, he's not um, up to speed. So he said he might not be able to get this rolling, which clearly, so... Uh, he he might not be able to get like the Zoom meeting rolling or yeah to get on Zoom. Okay, uh, did he say anything about what he do you said? Mean? He wanted more time. He told me he wanted more time to um, get things situated. But I I told him to call your office. I said I I don't know. I mean, you need to call Annie. You guys started this conversation. You need to do that. So just for my conversation with him, though. Um, I don't know if you table this or do a special meeting, you know, to handle it later. Or I don't know what you end up doing, but you you have more information on that with Gil than I do. I it sounds like you do because I didn't know that he was having a little like or if he he needed more time. I guess I. Yeah, it sounded like he was pretty overwhelmed with everything that's going on. So I don't know. Um, when are you set to make the actual purchase of the license? Is it? As soon as possible, as soon as you all, I, I just needed to know that you all approved it. Once right. you approve it, I'll pay for the license and take it over. Okay, so. Instruction. Right, so if, if that's the, um, if that's the question then, Annie, we're deciding, we know that it's in an appropriate place, mm -hmm. right? It's in the transferable location. So the license would be suitable for a business on, at that address. Um, I don't unless I'm, I, there's something I'm missing, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't approve the transfer. I just don't think we can do it today because you don't own it yet. Right. Yeah. Oh, looking. no, 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 you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be voting on the transfer. I don't have an application. I have no right. paperwork. I have nothing like that. You would just be voting that, uh, that the license commission is going to allow uh, Pine Grove to move to forward in yes. the process of transferring it. Yes. Right, I have no problem with that. I don't either. Okay. Cool. Do we need a motion for that vote, Annie? Or yeah, yeah. Do we, need, okay. we need a vote on that, or is it just discussion? Uh, yeah, we need a, a just. Uh, it'd be. I'd like a vote. Okay. okay. Um. Then regarding item number six, the discussion to determine the outcome of the all alcohol club license currently held by Pine Grove Golf Club incorporated in accordance with chapter 144 acts of 2008 i would vote yes to uh approve a transfer once the applications are complete and the purchase has been made i as well all in favor aye uh, great thank you all so we'll see you again when you have your application ready very good right. have a great afternoon thanks thank you. thanks Thank um and just moving forward i can we possibly take um, item number eight out of order and um, discuss it now while Andrew's here? Yes. Thank you. Yep, no problem. So item eight, discussion and possible vote regarding status of Cordial's permit for Highbrow Incorporated. So 
Andrew, I can assure you this has like consumed us as a volunteer committee for the city. We've all been re thinking really hard about this and doing a lot of research so that we feel well versed. Yeah. Um, Brian, my position based on the information we have, which is, I feel like if <clears throat> we have specific information from the ABCC that defines what they believe a cordial to be and the nuts and bolts of it is they believe it has to show up with cordial or liqueur on the bottle. I know that there's been, you know, we've all read the articles and there's evidence that in Boston that they've done something different. And um, I don't think that it's should be on our shoulders to go against what the ABCC has to specifically told us and do something different. I wish we could, honestly. I think it would be great if, if there was liquor license reform across the board, but, um, but we don't have that right now. And I'm hesitant to, having been given such very clear guidance from the ABCC on this specific topic, I'm very hesitant to not take it because I fear that that puts the city in some liability. And I think it would also put highbrow in some liability if they're found by the ABCC to be serving liquor that they shouldn't be. So um, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Well, I read um, the same material. And I, from what I understand with the cordial is not only are there either sugars or flavors added, there's another, is it a second distilling or something like that? Mm -hmm. Is my understanding? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I know there was a letter from Paul at V1 that said he hits every one of those attributes um, to make that a cordial, although it doesn't say it. Um, ABCC is who governs this license commission, correct? So. Well, they don't govern us, they provide us with, their job is to uniformly um, monitor all of their rules in the legislation and it's very, it just is really frustrating when we see that not happening because it makes our role that much harder. Right. Um, you know, so they can't, I mean, it's up to us how we want to, how we want to move forward with it. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with what Boston did exactly. Um, I know that Boston's bigger in every aspect than most everything else, but. Uh, Basically, Boston went against what the ABCC said. And was there any backlash on that from the ABCC? I'm not. Sh I'm not sure, but I'm. I know I, we're governed by Chapter 138, not necessarily the ABCC. So as long as license holders are following Chapter 138, I, I'm. I'm almost positive that the license commission can can impose their own restrictions. I know they can because each license commission has their own set of rules and regulations. Um, yeah, I don't know if that helps. That makes things more confusing. Yeah, so, I mean, and to go back to the um, meeting where we voted on the cordial license back in January, February, we were using specific definitions. We were using that um, multi-page document that outlined how the ABCC defines every um, every alcohol and that's available. So I remember on pages 4.8 to 4.10 or something, that was the list that we were using to come to that determination. <clears throat> none, there wasn't anything about vodka or uh, gin or anything like that on that list. So Right. Well, I don't think that, I mean, if it's pertaining to cordials only, they're not going to list the main, you know, right. as a vodka or whatnot. They're going to call it a cordial. Right, which is why we, we, personally, why I voted in favor of it, because it was that list of cordials. Had it had a fuller list of all of the alcohols now being served, I would have, I think we would have had a much longer discussion about it, because it's definitely tiptoeing into the all alcohol license territory. And unfortunately, we have, you know, there's, there's people who have the all alcohol license, there's people who have wine and malt, and there's people who are getting cordials. So we have to while there's still the silos for each one of definitions, I, I feel like we have to abide by that. We can't start screwing around with it. No, I hear what you're saying. Um, but on the same token, everything evolves. I mean... Oh, yeah. No, as it should. But I, don't, I, guess, I guess my point is, I don't think that this license commission should be carrying the water of that evolution. 
No, I get you. You but, know, and I, I completely I want to know is when do we? We sit back and we wait for everybody else to make the, you know, the wave and then we get on and ride it. I mean, right. I don't understand. I mean, Northampton is one of the bigger cities around. You got Springfield, Worcester, Boston. And I'd like to think Northampton and, you know, maybe Pittsfield. But at what point do – I mean, I'm going to say it again. I'm pro-business. I'd love for everybody to be able to do it. And, I mean, it is our decision – and it doesn't just stem for Andrew uh, and Highbrow. It's for every single person that could apply for it. So if it's truly a cordial, and I mean by if you could get into the court of law and you could prove it's a cordial, then maybe the, the license has to be written differently. You know, it does. I mean? And and but based so, on what we have to work with, we so. it's been made clear to us. By the ABCC, what's appropriate? Right. So your your stance is um, cease and desist. I would guess. To yeah, I would. My position would be to cease and desist serving that anything is not that is not already labeled a cordial or a liqueur or specifically on the documents pages four point eight through four point ten yeah. of that long list of what is considered suitable. Right. And then, so what's his recourse? It has to it, hire a lawyer to prove us wrong. And then well, it, I think it would have to be, have. Andy, could he appeal that with the ABCC or would we need to revoke the license entirely in order for him to appeal it? I will have to check with the city solicitor on that, but my guess would be that he could appeal it to the ABCC without a revocation hearing or okay. anything like that. Then if, so in other words, if what you're saying is if you, um, not you, but this commission puts forth a cease and desist. He can go to the ABCC and wait to hear what they say. And if they say, yeah, you know what? You proved us wrong. You're right. Then it opens up for everybody that has a cordial license. Correct? And yeah. Does I mean, that, that now, and does that affect our opinion on who's getting a, a cordial? I mean, honestly, if, I feel like if anybody applies and wants it, they get it. You know what I mean? Unless there's some outlanding... Uh, you know, law that says you can't. You know? Right. If the ABCC changes their definition that they've made extremely clear to this, this, this license commission, it's been made clear multiple times. Mm -hmm. Then of course, anybody who has a cordial license can serve then whatever is within the definition of the ABCC. Currently, that's not what's happening. Right. So what I mean, my point, we're putting the burden of the fight on the shoulder of the small businessman person. But we're not legislators. No, I know we're not. So, I mean, so, the same thing happened with the bees of Tapas. They didn't like our decision, so they appealed it to the ABCC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's law, what is the chat? What is it you, you said? Chapter 138, Annie? That's what liquor license are governed under, but what specifically do you... Well, I was wondering when you said that we're governed under that law, because the law is the law. If the ABCC is just um, another commission, so to speak, but they, they are in control of all the commissions, but their job is to enforce the laws, I guess I need to look up what exactly, I, I don't remember what that law states. So. What laws in particular are you referring to? Well, you, were, you were just saying earlier about the chapter that that's what we're governed by. Right. I'm just trying to give 110%, you know, like 360 chance on, on all of it here. If it's wrong, it's wrong at the end of the day. But, you know, um, to me, there's certain people in this world that get paid to write laws and enforce laws. And for them to have such a, a vague opening on this to make us as volunteers you know, try to sort this out, it's crazy. So I don't disagree yeah. with that at all. But they're not, you know, and you know, where's their effort? Are they trying to do anything about it? You know, that's what I mean about the evolution of it. What's it going to change? Right. And the we, ABCC that has to change it. Correct? So there is, well, it's, it should be up to the ABCC to come up with a clear definition, a clear list. Um, right. But it's the ABCC we're talking about. I, I mean, we can't, we're not going to get much. Um, but I mean, there is a clear cordials and liqueur definition in chapter 138, section one. Um, but Do you have that? Huh? Do you have that readily available or no? 
I just, I don't have any paper. I mean, I can, yeah, I mean, I can share my screen with you and you can, it's probably too small for you to look at though. Um, and I think we've, we're kind of, we're starting to go in circles again on this because we've. Yeah, we did, we have talked yeah, about yeah. that. That's fine. <clears throat> I'm going to email it to you, Brian. Yeah, that's good. So what do you, uh, what's next, Natasha? I mean, if, I think we need to, we need to vote on it on whether or not to apply what we have been told by the ABCC is the definition of this license, whether or not to apply that to what Highbrow is doing. And then that would result in a cease and desist for anything that is not considered by the ABCC to be a cordial. Then Andrew can go to the ABCC and, and appeal that. And I would encourage it to, you know, in hopes that they could write a clear, clear legislation on this. All right. I'm just not sure I'm comfortable on voting on something that they vaguely put together because it suits them because it's just another state job and they don't want to do their job. So I don't know. I mean, you can certainly put a motion out there and whether or not I vote for it or not, we'll see. You know, we may have to table it until Helen's involved. Okay. Helen did send her thoughts on it. Yeah, but it has to be a true vote, does it not? Or is that considered? Well, yeah, no, she can't vote on it, no. But she, she <clears> did <throat> send her thoughts. Did you read that email that was sent, Brian? With Helen, I did. From Helen? Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I did. She's wavered. And um, now she's kind of uh, in the same boat as you as, as well. And I'm there, too, as like I said, as long as the law clearly states it. But it seems to me that the law doesn't cover because if you've got people that are manufacturers of certain alcohols that are writing letters and stating that these cordials are, are these drinks or whatever they want to call it libation, it's made uh, as the process of a cordial. Well, but they're, I mean, they're just, I, and I'm not, I'm not disputing V1's letter, but that was nothing more than just words on paper saying there's sugar in my vodka. You know, there's no, we're not chemists. We can't, we can't take it the next step further because the bottle doesn't say cordial. So, right. you know, it's just. And is it, and then I'd like to also know, is it just a matter of somebody when they reprint their label to they throw cordial on it and it qualifies? I mean. Well, I mean, it would have to pass state muster and then it probably, I don't think that it would. And so yeah. no, because that, the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, they're the ones that tax that. So they're the ones that have to make sure that there's cordial listed on the label. Right. And there's no benefit to a cordial tax, right? So I, 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 I mean, I'm looking at it from a business owner's point of view. My, and it has, you know, little to do with this, but my point is, is if I'm V1 and I'm, ma I'm manufacturing that and I get a better tax break on a cordial than I do a straight alcohol, I'm going to list it as cordial, but it might be the other way around. So who knows? But it's all about money. Um, so, um, I'm guessing you want to make a motion to what cease and desist for Andrew? My motion, I, I think, would be a little bit more broader in, in that, you know, for the record, that um, I make a motion that restaurants in Northampton with a cordial license have to comply to the definition of cordials as stated explicitly by the ABCC. Is that a motion? Do you think it needs to have something specific to the specific cordial holder or can it just, can it be? It's a little vague. I guess I just don't really understand. Okay. So then I would make a motion to, um, to, to limit highbrow to serve serving only cordials as they are outlined and defined in our most recent communications with the ABCC. Yeah, but I think there has to be period of time on new evidence, you know, because I feel like the ABCC, just because they're lazy about it, they get to govern, you know what I mean? And that's a cop out for us as a license commission. I don't if, think it was a cop out. Business. I disagree. I think, I, I think, I mean, and just based on how much I've wrestled with this 
really honestly every day because I want, I, I wish there was liquor license reform. I wish everybody could have, be serving alcohol in the restaurants, but that's just not the system that we're working with. Right. Um, and I don't, I, I do not think it's this license commission's work to carry the water of changing legislation. Right. It's just not, we're volunteers. It's just not, it's not, it's not our role. That's the restaurant association's role. There's lots of different entities. Well, here, meaning, I mean, the bottom line is, is we, we took this, you know, um, position, volunteer or not, you know, we still Right, but we're not public. legislators, Brian. We're not here we're not to- not saying that we are, but we have to uphold, you know, exactly what the law states. Exactly. So. That's what, that's well, what, what I'm I think- I'm trying to take to your motion. I'm just trying to say to your motion, put in there so that, because that's, that's clear and decisive that he no longer has the right to serve. I mean, there's got to be something in there if he wants to do, in my opinion, I'm thinking about anybody that that's watching this now or paying attention or gets to read it and see it later, whatever. But there should be something that allows him to go with the ABCC and they change, um, I guess. But your motion covered whatever they write. Is there doesn't need to be anything specifically in the motion because any any action taking taken against a license holder has the authority to go to the ABCC and appeal it. It's in chapter right. 138. But my point is on the backside. So if ABC says, oh yeah, you know what, you're right, here's a clear and decisive, decisive list of cordials, then, I mean, that's what we really need. Oh, you mean you're worried that the motion would still stand if the ABCC changed their view on it? Yeah, I mean, well, I we don't can always We can always yeah. rescind it. Yeah. I and they do, they do have a list. I mean, that, that whole document that we reviewed back in, January or February, we were working from that list, that extensive list. Yeah, I know. And there's a gin and a and a whiskey that says actual cordial, right? On the, right. On yeah, label. and that's great. That's awesome. If it says, I mean, that's the that's what is the defining guidance for us. Right. And what about the list that we got from um, Martinetti? Um, did that help you guys at all? I mean, yeah, I mean, it totally did. If there, there's, it was there's some only, of them that don't say cordial. Like which ones? I mean, like California Falernum, California Fernet. Like this. Well, if you look at a Fernet, is a cordial. So that I mean, I don't know. We can we can we can beat this for months. And months and months and months. And I, I, my position still stands. And I would, you know, if we, if we take that vote, then I would, you know, and it moves forward as, as the motion, then I would hope that Andrew would take it back to the ABCC and appeal it and get clarification. I mean, I don't know what else to do, you know? Right. I just don't know what else, how much, I don't know how we can help. I don't know how, um, I'm, I'm working I'm tried, the only way I can come to a decision is to work with this little literal information that we've been given from the ABC. No, I know the only thing, and I agree with you on a lot of it. The only struggle that I have is that by definition of a cordial with the two and a half percent or two and a half plus percent. Yep. You know what I mean? And uh, hooray for uh, Andrew. They found a loophole and because they're paying attention, they're savvy businessmen and they're doing their thing. So, um, if I was out there and I had a cordial license, I'd be jumping on this bandwagon, but it just bothers me to throw a vote out knowing that the true definition stands, but the ABC's C's opinion is different than the true definition of a cordial. And I think that's his fight as well, you know, or, or whoever's. So um, it, it's just hard for me to love you a, um, a vote on that until, I, I mean, you're right. It shouldn't be governed by us. It shouldn't. I mean, it's not our uh, job to do the legis legislation, but the ABCC should, you know, get off their hands and do something about it. And I mean, quickly, we have an issue. They're I there agree. to resolve our issues, correct? I agree. You know, I mean, you're going to stop a guy's business because of we, d we clearly don't understand 100% of this. There's a clear definition, and then there's an opinion. And I just don't, I won't sleep good at night on changing a man's business persons whatever on an opinion so that's where i'm at with it i i just don't i don't know it just seems like and i'll say it again abcc needs to step up 
and do their damn job. How hard is it to look at the liquors that are distributed and say, yes, 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 no, no, yes, no, Jesus. Well, I guess they kind of did do that because they, they were the ones that told us that if it says it's a cordial, then it's okay. And if it doesn't, then it's not. Right. But but that doesn't mean every like you have to agree with it. I disagree with it. I, I, true I, clearly, that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, if there's a true definition of a cordial, and they're throwing out an opinion, it just it bothers me. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, who holds more weight, this license commission or Andrew Brow, going to the ABCC? Well, the the ABCC gives um, uh, they look at the decision of the local licensing authority, and they that weight that holds a lot of weight. They've told me that on many occasions. Right, they back up whatever we choose, basically. Not also, always, but yes, they they hold our opinion high in their decision making. And we've gone to them on this topic for guidance. And the, the response was, it could not have been more clear. If it's not labeled a cordial or a liqueur, then it's not considered within the scope of the cordial license. For them, for the state of Massachusetts. That was the response to our query. Right. Well, I mean, I'd like to know, you know, if that's the case. Um, I guess I just didn't have enough time to put into it to see what Boston did and, and how, and, and, you know, like you say, we all have lives here too. So what else are we supposed to do? I don't know. I mean, I guess you put the burden on Andrew to go and fight the monster on the top of the mountain. And I mean, just because if the ABCC says one thing, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't mean you have to go with what they say. Well, this is my point though. Because Boston did the same thing. Boston, the Boston licensing board did not agree with the ABC's decision of the of cordials. So they did their own thing and they said, you can do this X, Y, and Z. And somebody out there probably hired an attorney to figure that out. You know what I mean? And that, I would love to see I if that's- I think the public. Boston licensing board is literally all attorneys. Well, there you go. Yeah. So. Mm. So I'm getting back to your point where we don't have to agree um, with the ABCC, but are we out of our, um, not jurisdiction, but are we not following, are we breaking state law by not doing so? And I just want everybody to take into opinion, you know what I mean? And open it up. I don't, you know, you know, just. That's, I mean, that, that was my point when we started this conversation this afternoon was in going against what has been explicitly said to us multiple times. Are we liable for something? Does that make Andrew liable for something? Right. I don't know. Well, how hard is it to get ABCC to answer that question for us? I mean, they've, I don't. I mean, if you do a motion that, that question, pardon me. I don't know that they would have, I don't know that they would find that's in their purview to answer that question. And to me, it's, it's, that's part of my thought process, but I still come back to, I'm, I, I have the explicit definition from the ABCC and, and the documents that we were reviewing when we granted the cordial license to begin with understand that but there's there's opinions on both sides of course there are but we right now we get to we are we've been asked to decide if we want to vote on it or not today and 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 doing so depending on how the vote turns out i mean i could vote one way you could vote the other and then i don't know what happens it comes up again at the next meeting annie how does that how does that that's work my point that's why i said wait for helen because it's going to come up and be that to, anyway so, you know what I mean? I, I just, I can't, I can't levy a fair vote in favor to uh, stop this guy because we have the opinion of the ABCC. We have proof that Boston basically told the ABCC to go pound sand. 
then, and then on the other hand, we're told as a license commission that we have the power or what not to do what we need to do, or I, I just don't get it. So how is it so clear and decisive to make a cease and desist vote and just say, yep, yeah, oh, too bad. ABCC's uh, opinion of this is this and you're out. But yet Boston seems to stand high, wave their flag and say, no, you're wrong. And that's, that's certainly an unfairness, but I also don't think that it's, it's that the town, the city of Northampton, that we have to examine every, every aspect of what other communities are doing. So how do we our job right here in this license commission to do the best we can for the businesses and under and we our- do. And I think we do, holy cow. Yeah, okay. I think we do. Well, that's what I'm doing right now. As so, am I. I know, but I see it a different way. If Boston is, is um, there's got to be a legal loophole there. I'm not even legal. I mean, the, I, the true definition. I mean, whatever, let's vote. We'll wait for Helen anyway, and then you guys. Well, can I mean, uh, Annie, is it even worth the time to make a vote? Because I know which way I'm going to vote with the hope, the outcome being that Andrew would go to the ABCC and appeal that. That's how I'm going to vote. I think Brian's going to vote differently, which is totally fine. Do we even bother having the vote? Do we wait until we have a full commission? I mean, if you have a vote or you wait, it's the same thing. So mm -hmm. I would just say no vote. I and, just, yeah, I don't see the point in voting. And I don't know if this helps, but I a, a little while ago, I sent an email to city, the city solicitor and I said that the commission is kind of like, undecided because after hearing what he had to say um after he spoke to the abcc and after the articles that i had researched um which were the ones that the boston licensing board disagreed with the abcc um i said that the commission doesn't really know what how to proceed and he said these press reports shouldn't put the commission at a loss. Apparently the Boston Licensing Commission agrees with Mr. Brow. However, that's not the ABCC's position according to Ralph, which is the executive director. As I often say, just because another community does something doesn't make it lawful. That's what I want to know. So then where's attorney Seawald so he can tell us exactly what lawful is? Because lawful is not agreeing with an opinion of ABCC. Lawful is following the law that legislators, legislation in this, in this state wrote. And if there's nothing that clear, then that's up to them to change that. And until then, he found a loophole. I don't know what to say. And I mean, as long as you just, I mean, you might want to say, listen, you serve those we know that there's you know the opinion of the abcc we know that there's the clear decisive uh definition of a cordial right now we're up in the air we're, we're tossing this you keep serving what you're serving at your own risk the license commission doesn't carry any risk on that you know and that's his decision until we can find out but this is the same place we were a month ago and all we have is opinion in my, in my case. Yeah, anybody can write a list of cordials and say, yeah, here you go, this is what we have. I dug this up in the archive and I, and I threw it at you because that's what existed. You know, well, like I said, things are evolving. So all these new craft breweries and everything in the last 10 years, well, the same with alcohols. So now if that's the definition of a cordial, then somebody's gotta get off their butt that works for the ABCC or state legislation and write something that's clear and decisive so that we don't have to sit here like a bunch of buffoons and, and discuss this like ad nausea. So I say table it till Helen um, and find out something or if you want to vote so that it, you know, does something liability wise for us, then we can vote and um, we'll still be in the same point. But I think one carries something than the other. So if you table it, I think that's like saying, yeah, go ahead, do what you want. If you vote, it puts an official stance on it. Then do you want to make a motion for a vote? You can. I'm, just, I'm going to disagree with your motion. I know that Helen wants that now, but I think we need more research. And if I got to dive in myself and try to figure it out, and Andrew, I would hope that you're going to do the same. You know what I mean? If you're just, you know, coasting and serving and not diving into this with ABC, then I don't know what to tell you. But if I were you, I would be diving in and, and getting some clear, decisive answers on this and make somebody make a decision on 
what those alcohols are. So. I don't really see the point of a vote, but Annie, if you want us to have a vote just for the record, I'll do that, but. Um, I think either way is fine. Okay, but I don't see the point. Okay. You know, but I have to say, and I, I want Andrew to hear this also, because you've said this a couple times, Brian, you've made mention of being pro-business. And when you say that, you're kind of pivoting to make the License Commission look anti-business. And we've been working our tails off since March. We've had over eight hours of special meetings to get businesses back out in the streets, being able to serve the extension of premise for all of their licenses. We've been working really hard to get businesses as close as open and, and earning income so that try and help them survive because what's happened with the pandemic is awful. It's unbelievably right. awful. And I so, don't mean it when I say pro business, it's got nothing to do with you or Helen or anybody. When I first joined this 14 years ago or however long it's been, it was different. And um, you know, I brought a lot of uh, business logic to this commission. So, and I know you guys do a great job as well. And Helen, I think, owned a business too. So it's nothing to do with you guys. It's just, I want people out there, the restaurant owners, I want them to understand that we are in their corner. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's what why we're we doing. have, yeah, Brian, we had eight hours of special meetings. Yeah, I know. That's what this debate is about. To, to so. show restaurants that we were in their corner. Yeah. And this, and Andrew, I'm serious. I think about this stupid license every day. I want to do the right thing by you. I want you to have the best business that you can have. But it has to be fair and it has to be in compliance. And that's, that's my position today. And that's going to be my position later. I, if the ABCC comes forward and says something different, awesome. But they haven't done that. And I don't expect them to. Right. So either way, the, at next month's meeting, if, um, unless you call a special one, we'll have a, um, clear and decisive answer. So how are we going to get that answer? Yeah, we, the clear and decisive answer we've, we've gotten from the ABCC that was given to attorney Seawald several times now. Right. You know, we've, we've been wrestling with this. I don't see it. We're continuing to kick the can on it. And I think that there are oftentimes I want a full commission to, in order to have votes on issues like this. And we okay. have, maybe you know, I need to go back and read then again because i didn't read anywhere and you know it was just a the list of you know cordials but i want to see i want to see the written verbiage or or have somebody send it to this commission what they're talking about with the new uh, vodkas and gins and all these alcohols that are being made i mean it's just unfair, in my opinion, to just dismiss this and go, oh, this is the way it's always been. This is how it is. See you later. I mean, we've been presented with a real situation. So yeah, of course. You know, that's all I'm saying. And um, shame on me for running three businesses and trying to volunteer. I don't have the time to do the research, but I'll certainly make the time this, you know, with the, the next week or two or whatever to see if I can even Call All you have to do is research your email because I've sent I've sent everything. I've sent the research from Boston. If you need me to resend, I can do that. You yeah. and maybe resend the communications with Attorney Seawald so that I mean that's the clear that's have all those. the defining emails. Yeah, I think have all of them. So it's just a matter of I guess I want to get on the phone with the ABCC if I can and be like. So you should do that. You should definitely do that. I mean, will they talk to you? Will they return a absolutely. call? Absolutely. You are uh, Ella, you're you're part commission. of the local licensing commission. Yes, they will absolutely talk to you. Okay. That's the best good. person to talk to is Ralph, the executive right. director, and he's pretty accessible too. Can you get me his contact information later? Yep. Thank you. And so I guess, so I don't know how you guys, or how, Brian, you suggest we get a clear-cut answer. I guess the only thing is that we can have a Attorney Seawald couldn't attend this meeting. That's the only reason why he's not here, but I can have him I can have him at the next meeting, or if you want a special meeting, I can have him there. Well, does it take a special meeting or can I call him too and, and discuss some things? Oh, you can you can call him and talk to him. Okay. I just didn't want to overstep. So I mean, I think it stays right where it was, you know, full well knowing. And I think we at the last meeting you know, look at the minutes, but we kind of told Drew that, you know, it's on you, you know, so 
this is the stance of the license commission at this point. We all know there's issues, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just guessing. I, I can't remember exactly what was said at the last meeting. But however, we left it with them. It was that you guys were going to review the documents he said and make a determination, but I think it just it just brought up more questions. Because uh, in my opinion, there's just still no decisive answer. And it's not as simple as going, oh, here's old hat. We're going to keep wearing it. Um, I disagree with that. You know, so. And uh, I hope in this, uh, you know, and it's sad for the people that paid everything they paid for an all alcohol license. If it does actually resolve itself into opening it up to these, you know, a larger list of cordials. But it is what it is. So. Um, you know, that's the, the changing of the game, I guess. So we'll see. Should we move on or move back to item seven? I don't think we have anything else to discuss on, on this. So I guess what is, what is the, what, how are we moving forward? Well, Brian has said he's gonna call the ABCC and he's gonna call attorney Seawald. And if you could re-forward him, the research that you've sent us in your emails with attorney Seawald, I think maybe in, if there's a way to send it in one batch so he has all of that at his fingertips and easy for review. Yep. So moving on. Brian, are you good to go to the. Yeah, I'm just looking at the cordial list sent from that distributor. That's all. I was, but I'm good to move on. Yeah. Okay. Annie, you good? I'm good. Um, item number seven: discussion and possible vote to impose an annual renewal fee for holders of a cordials liquors permit. So uh, Helen had brought this up at one of our previous meetings. She ju she just uh, she just asked about it because at the time we approved. At the time that we that the commission voted to allow the city to accept the section of part of chapter 138, mm -hmm. um, we didn't discuss fees. Um, but Helen thought that it was a we should discuss it. And I did some research. I sent you guys a spreadsheet of other cities and towns that have yeah. order permits and their fees. Um, I. I'm now realizing now that Helen's not here, maybe it's not a great time to have a discussion about it. Um, I do have, can I ask a question about it? Sure. Um, what is the wine and malt fee in Northampton? 1550. 1550. Per annual. All right, okay. If you wanna wait until Helen's here to discuss, discuss it further. Yeah, um, which would be October, which is fine. I just was thinking that if we were gonna, if you were gonna impose one, we should do so before the November renewal time. But oh, right. October, we'll we'll have enough time. So that'll be that'll be fine. Okay. Brian, do you have anything to add to that item? No, I don't. Okay. Then we'll table it for Helen. Is there any new business? I don't, I don't have any. Is, um, do we expect any new applications for extensions of premise? Um, I don't have, yeah. Um, Amy smiling, I see you. Um, I, I don't have any right now. I, Paul and Elizabeth had reached out um, about possibly going in front of Thorns. I've been following up with him and haven't received a response, so I don't know where that's at. Um, Belly might be back. Belly might be? Okay. Um, Unless you've heard differently over the past couple of weeks. I haven't. I haven't heard from her. Um, I reached out to Teapot to see if they'd be looking to come out. I haven't heard back. Um, bueno said no, but they don't have liquor. So, um, yeah, I don't, none that are, no. 
Okay. Um, so I don't think, are we all set then with new business? Yes. Yep. And <laughs> we can't vote on the minutes. Because yeah, I was just going to ask. Uh, Helen's not here and Brian wasn't at that meeting. So we'll, okay. have, to, we'll have to table those minutes. Okay, and when is our our next meeting would be the regularly, I assume would be the regularly scheduled? Um, yes, with the understanding that we might need a, uh, a special meeting in between. Yep. Um, other than that, it would be October 7th. 7th, okay. All right. Great. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. See you later.